going on everybody and welcome back to Frankie's Aquatics right here on the wonderful platform that is YouTube. We'll start this video off like we do every single week and ask how you guys have been. How has your week been? Do let me know what you've been up to in the comments below. This week has been a good one for me as always. New camera angle. You know, it's in the difference. It's less squeaky. I can maneuver without the squeaky squeak because I haven't moved house unfortunately. Um, I've not escaped the squeak that much but I have moved to a better spot and I think a better angle as well in regards to the old camera. So let me know how you feel about it. Is this better? Do you prefer this? Or do you prefer it at more of an angle? I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. I do hope you've had an absolutely amazing week. This week's video, we're gonna be talking about a question that gets caught. <laughs> this week, we're gonna answer a question that does kind of crop up quite frequently. People often message me asking me how I keep my earthworms. How do I stop them from escaping? How do you keep them for longer? Do you gut feed them? How do you do things? So without going too big and adventurous in regards to a whole massive wormery, which obviously you can do in your garden, I thought I would show you how I do things. Now I've been doing this for about three years with absolute ease, and this is definitely, in my honest opinion, tried and tested loads of different ways of doing it, but this is by far the best and most convenient way of doing it. So without further ado, let's go and get on with this week's video. Come on, let's go. So I'm going to show you how I do things. Now, first and foremost, it's not going to win any prizes for being anything to look at. It's quite ugly, but there is a reason as to why I do things this way. I have been running this system now for about three years and it's never once failed me. So let's have a little closer look on how I do things and how to make it much more effective and hopefully a lot cheaper too. So the first thing you're going to want to get is you're going to want to get yourself some sort of container, some sort of tank holder. Some of them are really fancy with lids and some people might go, oh, brilliant, pop the lid on, don't need this, pop the lid on and away you go. And then you wake up in the morning to find all your worms have escaped through these little air hole grids. They are absolutely amazing little escape artists and they will get out of anything, even something as simple as the little holes there. They will get out of them and yes, before you know it, you'll have worms all over your house. So that is why these t-shirts, and in this case, a pair of briefs, go on top of the tanks to stop them from escaping. Now obviously don't go cutting up your wife's knickers and don't go cutting up your own boxer shorts or anything like that. Just do it for the record, these aren't my wife's bloomers, just, just trying to be funny. I want to make, I want to make that clear. <laughs> But any, any old t-shirt will do, you cut it down, you just gently place it over the top and then you click your lid on if you happen to have a lid. And then basically that stops any of these little monkeys in here from escaping. Now if you haven't got a lid like this one, this one obviously the lid is broke on this one, so I use, I basically use an, an elastic band. It's actually a hair tie that goes around the top of it, which basically stops any escapees escaping. And again, same method, inside, nice rich soil which wasn't always that rich which is just now composted by the lovely worms which are at the bottom so any little bits that you see at the top like these 
these are little tiny bits of leftover mashed potato. What I do is I get some new potatoes, I cook them as if I was gonna eat them for myself, I let them cool down, I mash them, and I gently sprinkle a very small layer across the top. Now this will provide enough food for the earthworms to thrive and survive, and they will turn it into this lovely rich compost over time. Now you don't wanna to put too much on, because what will happen, they won't eat it all quick enough, and it will get moldy, and it will start to stink. I keep both of these tanks actually in the outhouse. I say an outhouse, just a fancy shed. Um, just to keep them nice and cold, and it does exactly what I need it to do. I buy them in kg packs, I separate the kg between the two tanks, I leave them be for a couple of weeks, and then in their own time, they will take to the tanks and they will happily breed, which obviously makes things a lot cheaper for us keepers. We don't have to continuously be buying earthworms. Now what you'll find is they like to live at the very bottom. So these little beauties here are all gut fed with mashed potato. Obviously you can use other things, other old vegetables and, and fruits, but a lot of them kind of give a bit of a stink. Now as you can see, I don't buy them this small. That is actually a baby that I've raised myself. Um, so obviously it's a lot cheaper and it's a lot more cost effective in regards to obviously on the old bank balance. So this is how I do it. It really is that simple. So always there's a few things that you've got to absolutely take into consideration. Um, you don't want to buy too many worms for the container that you're keeping them in. If you do that, they'll basically all huddle together in like a ball and then unfortunately they'll slowly perish in the heat, in the lack of space, they won't thrive. They will just die off slowly and you won't be getting the results that you're after. So make sure whatever you are popping into each container, make sure the container is suitable to hold the amount of worms. The general rule of thumb is a small golf ball size of earthworms is ample for a tank of this size. So this isn't exactly huge. I think this is about 15 litres. That's ample for that amount of worms, as is this one, which is a tiny bit smaller if you see in comparison. So that's the first thing you want to get. You want to get your container right. You also want to be considerate to where you're going to keep your container. If you pop these in a living room area where it's warm, unfortunately the soil will dry out really quickly and then the worms again will perish. You want to make sure the, the um, soil is wet but not damp. So basically, you want it a bit like sand on a beach. You want it where you can't squeeze any water out of it, but it is a little bit damp that it kind of holds its shape once you've squoze it. So you want it nice and moist. It'll hold the oxygen in the soil better for the worms to thrive, but you don't want it wet. Now, what do you do if your aquarium that you're keeping these in or your tank does start to show signs of water? Don't be too alarmed. The easiest way to, cut, to counteract that is pop some sort of something in there that's gonna soak up that moisture. The best thing I can suggest to you is newspaper. I actually haven't got any to hand to show you, but just basically newspaper that you'd get from a, from a newsstand. Scrunch it up into nice balls, just gently place it on the top, or better still, kind of turn whatever the tub is into the newspaper itself. So for example, if as I was showing you here today, I'd put the newspaper on the floor there, I would pour this into the newspaper, and then I'd gently pop it back in to the tank. Now what that will do over time, it will soak up that moisture, and it will also give a safe haven for your worms to continue to thrive. Um, when it comes to feeding, again, you don't really want to use anything too funky because you don't want it to go off too quick and you don't want to use too much. So again, a couple of potatoes, potatoes, will do both of these aquariums just fine. Don't be tempted to throw everything in there. Now, obviously, if you have your own worm that's outside of your property, then obviously you can chuck whatever the hell you like in there and it will do just fine. But if you're doing it this way, this method, this is kind of like a bit of a small DIY method, then you don't want to overpower it. You don't want to gut feed too much. Because so all that will happen is the food won't get eaten in time. It will then begin to decay. You'll also get loads of these little white bugs, which are actually fine. You might even see a few in here, little white bugs. They basically just go around eating anything that the worms miss, so they're not a bad thing to have. But if you put too much in there, you're gonna have too many of these bugs, and it's gonna weird you out next time you go to your tub to grab some worms. So just to reiterate what I've already said, a nice size container for the worms that you're keeping. Oh, that's me leg. <laughs> some nice rich soil that you can buy from a compost or a garden center. Just make sure whatever soil you are using, make sure it's not treated with anything. Some soils, not all, thanks. Some me. compost and soil that you can buy in big bags does unfortunately contain these little tiny white balls, which are designed to keep like slugs and snails away from your plants. That's great for the purpose at hand, but unfortunately, you don't really want your worms in that. Because what will happen is over time, your lovely worms that you obviously trust to feed your axolotl will digest 
ingest these pellets. And then what will happen is you don't really know what they're gonna do once they're inside of your axolotl. So don't be tempted to buy that stuff. It's usually a bit cheaper, which makes it a bit more appealing. But just buy the stuff that you obviously know is completely safe, completely 100% soil. There's no kind of hidden nasties or fertilizers in there. Once you've done that, you've obviously got the compost good. Then you can obviously add your worms in there. Um, worms um, some people catch wild I personally don't just for the simple fact that you don't know where, what's, what they're coming with you don't want to kind of bring any wild worms in they might have pesticides that you're absolutely oblivious to you put them into your aquariums your axolotls eat them and then before you know it then you're going to have all sorts of problems internally um, once you've got your soil right and your tank right you're going to want to think about how you're going to keep them in for those of you who have contacted me saying my worms have escaped help how did that happen I couldn't answer it they're just really good escape artists you give them a tiny millimeter like I said something as simple as this gridded lid they can easily escape this and I'm not even joking you I don't even know how they do it but they manage to squeeze their way, their way through that so the best thing you can do is find an old t-shirt an old tea towel preferably something a bit thinner than a tea towel to be perfectly honest you just gently drape it over the top of your aquarium like so obviously covering all corners and then once you pop your lid on that will hold the t-shirt in place making it a lot more obviously effective in keeping those worms inside. Again, if you haven't got a lid like this one, I do a very similar thing. I just drape the old t-shirt over the top of it like so, making sure all covers are cornered. I use a headband that I've politely borrowed long-term off one of my daughters, and then I just gently drape that over, making it fit around the perimeter of the aquarium, and that alone will hold the worms in yet again. And then once that's been set up for a few weeks, you'll notice that everything will kind of take hold and your worms will start to thrive. You'll not need to buy worms nearly as much and it will just really take off and it'll really look after itself. It really is cost effective. Now, I know most people, or at least some people, like to just keep the worms in what they come in. Those little containers that you buy them in or the bags, that's great and they will do okay in there. But unfortunately, it's not a, it's not a kind of platform that they're going to thrive in. In order for them to thrive and obviously not escape, you're going to want to make sure you keep them in something very similar to this. Again, if you have a wormery outside, that's a whole different ball game. You don't have to follow these rules as such. But you want to do something little just to keep your axolotl's food alive and active, then this is the sort of thing that you're going to want to do. It really is as simple as that. Um, there's no kind of hidden techniques of doing things. You've just got to remember, use a tub that's a suitable size. Make sure you have a very secure lid. Don't just rely on a nice fitted lid. You have to kind of extra secure it because they are amazing escape artists. There was once upon a time, I used to keep them in my living room just up here behind the plants. And there was more times than I care to admit that they'd actually escaped. They are brilliant escape artists. So you have to think a little bit ahead of yourself and definitely pop in an old t-shirt, an old rag, whatever it might be, not too thick that you don't want to suffocate them. You want to keep the airflow kind of going along quite nicely. So a nice thin t-shirt, not this t-shirt, it's far too nice to use for that. But a nice thin t-shirt will definitely help obviously keep them wormies in place and then use an elastic band of some sort to obviously secure the lid. I don't know how to do it, but they are just amazing at escaping. So just be ahead of them. Don't let them beat you. Don't let those wormies beat you, okay? Don't do it. Not today, Wormies, not today. So thank you all for stopping by and checking out this week's video. And an extra special thank you, as always, to my Frankie Lottles, my Patreon supporters. You guys are amazing. And we've really built a nice little community over there now, haven't we? We've got an active Patreon chat room exclusive over on Discord, which is great. I love it. I log in in the mornings and people are talking amongst themselves, getting to know each other, sharing tips and tricks. And I'm really... Really humbled by how great of a community we've got over there. So if you want to be part of the Frankie Lottles patron, then do have a little look below at all the relevant information you'll find also, there. So axolotl availability, I've, re I've received, I've received, I've received a massive spike of interest once again in regards to my axolotls and their availability. Now there is a bit of a waiting list, so do get in contact on the relevant information above if you are interested and live within the UK. Unfortunately, it has to still remain within the UK. There's no possible logical way right now for me to ship overseas to any other country. And you're interested in a rescue axolotl or maybe one that I've raised myself, then do get in touch and we'll talk more. Also I decided to take a little bit of a step back from the old Facebook platform. It was just becoming impossible to man. I did accept a little bit of help um, from a member of the community, but it was still becoming an impossible task to kind of manage. So I've decided to kind of make my inbox What's the word? There's a word for it. Hmm. Nine times out of ten, I always forget the word. See what I did there? <laughs> it's obsolete. That's the word. Obsolete. We do no longer use or contact Facebook. 
Obviously, there's still a Facebook page. I still advise that you go and check that out. It will still be relevant. It will be still being updated, but it won't be manned around the clock in regards to my inbox. So do make sure you go over there and support, but don't expect an instant reply if you do get back to me. If you send a message, the best thing you can do is contact me on email, or better still, Instagram. I love doing this, doesn't I? Better still, Instagram. It's a lot easier for me, and you'll probably get a much quicker response, but just remember it is just me doing it. So don't be offended if I don't get straight back. Now, if you haven't done so already, please be sure to that like button. It just lets me know that you enjoy the content that I'm producing, and it really helps the algorithm. Something I'm learning about every day, the algorithm. People go to me, how's, that, how's YouTube going? Oh, it's going great, really good. Do you know about the algorithm? Nah. Do you know about algae? I you know about algae. Give it a clean. Nothing about algorithm. I just talk and just hope it does well. <laughs> Thank you as always for your support though. So do make sure you hit the like button just to let me enjoy the content. Also hit the subscribe button. That will keep you in the loop on my upload, which at the moment is every Monday and it has been for nearly 12 months, if not longer. And also ding that notification bell. That will keep you in the loop every time I get your little notification every time I upload a video. So until next time, to ta for now. Now I'd like to give a very special shout out to my patrons, also known as Frankie Lottles. Thank you all so much for your support. If you'd like to get yourself involved, you'll find all the relevant information directly below. Oh, this was fun. I enjoyed this one. I hope you like the angle. I really do hope you like the angle. It's nice. It gets all my tanks in pretty much, and it, well, all the ones that are downstairs. And it also shows me plants off. I'm going to be surrounded by plants. I like it. I like it a lot. I do. I like me plants. Oh, I like me plants. Mm -hmm.